Jim, I need a touch this morning. I'm a little nervous. Touch you, Lord. Man, Father, I just praise you and thank you, Father, and I pray that you just anoint David to do the work that you called him to do, Lord. And, Father, I just pray, Lord, that your word will just speak volumes. Lord, Father, through David, Lord, Father, I pray that you'll heal, you'll deliver, um, you'll set free the captive, Lord, Father. And, Father, I praise you for your word, for your word is truth. And it's perfect, Lord Father. So I pray, Lord Father, that you'll help David now. Lord Father, bring your word forth in Jesus' name, Lord Father. Father, I just declare that he is anointed for the work you've called him to do, Lord Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. And amen. Uh, before I get started, I had... Um, I had, when we were going around and doing prayer requests and... and I think it was a word from the Lord that Satan is busy. Satan. Jesus set up a pattern in the home. Okay? Jesus set up a pattern in the home. And no offense to the women, but he set up a pattern that the man is supposed to be the head of the household. Exactly right. Okay? And if that offends you, I'm sorry. But that's a pattern from Jesus. But he is so busy tearing down the man to make him feel worthless that he is no longer the man or the head of the household. It's true. <coughs> A lot of women do it. Jesus set that up is because that is a pattern of him. He is the head. Yes. Amen. He's the head. Godhead, amen. Okay? Okay? But Satan is so busy attacking the home that the men feel worthless. True. And the suicide rate is greater among men than it is women. Because they feel worthless. Now, isn't that like Satan to attack what God had set up and turn it and change it around to make them think that they aren't the head anymore. That they aren't worth the, being the head. Right? Um, he is so busy working in the background that we don't see. But we got to start understanding who it is. And we got to be able to stop it. We, God gave us the right to stop it. But we got to be able to see it in the spirit. Does that make sense? Yes. That was just a sidebar. I, I, I got a word that he, he just wanted me to, to speak that, and we need to take a hold of that. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Uh, I'm going to kind of go over the... Um, I was on a, up here a couple, three or four weeks ago or whatever it was, and... Um, and I was bringing a word and I didn't quite get finished, but I want to start in a different spot. And if I get to there, I get to it. If I don't, I don't. Um, there's a name above every other name. Yeah. Okay. Um, that is also a pattern that God has set forth that is the truth over the truth, over the truth, over the truth. Okay? I'm going to start in Philippians, the second chapter, and it says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name. Every name. COVID. Cancer. Whatever else he wants to come up with, Satan wants to try to attack us with. Okay? Jesus said his name is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Of things in heaven and things in earth, and things under the earth. Why did he put that in there? 
Think about it. Why did he put that in there? And things under the earth. He's given us the power in Jesus' name that we can step on Satan's head. I never really noticed that part before. But that part was kind of and things under the earth. That's Satan and his cohorts down there trying to torment us. But he's given that name, Jesus, above every name. And that every tongue shall, every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to glory the God the Father. Amen. Every tongue. Now, we know from Revelations, every tongue doesn't do that. Right? We've seen the end of the book. There's going to be a great falling away. Right? Amen. Some will get saved by fear, it says, in Revelations. Right? But there's going to be ones that are lost also, correct? Yeah. Yeah. That's what it tells us, unfortunately. But Jesus is... Jesus is telling us that he wants every tongue to confess. Now, we know that's not going to happen by what we see at the end. But that's not, that doesn't mean that that's not his will for you and I and everybody else out there. His will is to have better. His will is to have better. So, before I get started in, so we know what the name means. The name Jesus. We can, we can use it in a way that is not very nice to hear. We can. People do. Right? Um, but when you use it in the right way, heaven is opened up. It stops waiting for the command. It stops waiting for the command. When Jesus was on the cross, <clears throat> what do you think the angels were on? And then all the torment that he was going through, they were waiting. They were looking at him going, are, are we ready? Because we're going to wipe them all out. Yeah. <laughs> all right. yeah. And they were waiting, right, for the word. And they heard this lowly voice say, Jesus, or Lord, forgive them. The angels heard that. Lord, forgive them. Wow. So the angels are really going, okay, now what? What should we do now, right? When Jesus was hanging there on the cross, and... <clears throat> The thief was mocking. And the other thief was mocking. And then one finally got a word that something was different about this guy in the middle. Right? And he just stopped mocking. And he just kind of thought, well, you know what? If this guy is who he says he is, I'm just going to ask, what do I have to lose? Right? right? What do I have to lose? Yeah. So he just said, Lord, remember me. 
That's all it took. Amen. He didn't have to be educated. He didn't have to be um, astute in the word. He just had to believe and speak it. He had to believe and speak it. Amen. Now, if you remember the last time when I was talking about how Satan is uh, power and prince of the air. So we have to speak the word. If we want to stop him in his tracks, we have to speak the word. Because he's out there and he's right here chomping all the time, telling us how bad we are and what we're worth and what we're not worth and all this other stuff, right? In, in Hebrews eleven six, it says, but without faith, it is impossible to plead him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. He's a rewarder. So we have to believe that, right? Amen. So when Satan's out there in the power of the air and all we hear is his noises, right? Because his noises get loud, don't they? His noises get loud. We have to believe that our word from Jesus will quench that spirit. And that, that we're going to see the reward of it. Right? Do we want to stop the attacks on our home? Then we have to speak it. Call forth. That's right, brother. We... It's not only just our home. It's our, it's our work. It's our town. It's our country. Is our country not sick? Amen. Absolutely it is. Because the church isn't running it. The church is on the, by, on the sidelines watching. For what? For what? Do we really want to see our country go to the to the hands of Satan? Because that's where it's going. Amen. You've heard the expression, this country is going to hell. Well, that's where it's going. Mm -hmm. But the church has a right to stop it. Yeah, Amen. Amen. Position yet. That's right. Boy, he he just he does not. He does not want this church defeated. Amen. And he does not want us to give up. In 1 Peter it says. In 5.8. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary the devil. As a roaring lion. Walketh about seeking whom, whom he may devour. As. Doesn't say he is. There's a big difference. There's a big difference. The reason he put that in there is because Satan can be loud and he can roar. Okay? Mm -hmm. And the seas can get up in front of you and you lose track of where you're at. And all of a sudden you start sinking. Right? Right? And Jesus keeps telling us time and time and time and time again. I am still right here. I have never left you. I will never leave you. I am the same today, yesterday, and forever. Okay? And all you got to do is call out to me. And he'll pull you up out of the water, and you won't be wet, and you walk back to the boat. He loves us. Amen. In Ephesians 6, in the 16th verse, it says, Above all things, <coughs> taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. 
All of them. All of them. Now, what does that mean? It's the faith, right? So who's the faith got to be in? Jesus, right? The faith has got to be in Jesus. So once we get there, once we become saved, okay? We have to do that first. Everybody agree, right? Yeah. You have to do that first. Then he starts giving us all the lessons that come with being saved. Right? Yeah. All the things we have power to do. And I'm not even touching the surface. I'm not even scratching it. This is just parts of it. All the fiery darts. It's in Romans, <clears throat> in the 8th chapter and the 28th verse, and it says, And we know. How do we know? Faith in Jesus, right? right. Amen. So that's number one. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. All things. The election didn't go the way I wanted it. Amen. He says all things are going to work out. It's not over yet. Amen. He said all things are going to work out. I am not to worry. I am not to worry. He said all things. Now, I still have a part to play in it, do I, do I not? Okay. Here's the way I want to see it. If we have a new president sworn in in January, I want to see him saved. Amen. Yes. Yeah. That's right, bottom line. And change the country forever. Amen. Now, that I have to choose to do. Because I didn't see the results I wanted to see. Now I have to choose to do something that I may not care for. There's a difference, right? When we become Christians, we don't have that luxury to say, nah, I don't like him, so I'm not going to pray for him. Amen. We don't have that luxury. We have to suck it up, right? Amen. And say, Lord, your will. Amen. Lord, your will. Yeah. Right? Whether I like it or not. Amen. He tells us we're supposed to love our enemies. Okay. It's easy to do, right? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. That's why he tells us we need to love them. Because he knows it's not going to be easy. In Mark, the fifth chapter, in uh, twenty. Fifth verse. We were talking about the woman with the issue of blood, and she just she was went to them, and all that that she spent nothing worked right, and and all of a sudden she thought, well, if I just go up and touch the, the coat, right, be healed. What happened? She believed, right? Amen. And what do we get? Do we always get that instant gratification? No. Do we always? No. Does that mean it's not possible? All things are possible with God. Right there it was, right? It is possible. Right? But we may not see it all the time. We may not see it right away. That's right. In Matthew 21st chapter in the 21st verse. 
Verily I say unto you, if ye have faith and doubt not, you shall not only do which is done to the fig tree, but also if you say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. Now he didn't say might receive. He said you shall. It was a promise. Right? right. That was a promise. <clears throat> May shall. No, it's you shall. <clears throat> In Matthew the 17th chapter in the 20th verse. It says, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have as a grain of mustard seed. How big is a grain of mustard seed? Very small. Very small. There is. Very small. Smallest seed in the garden. So, what he's trying to tell us is, I know you're going to get beat up and pushed down, but just have enough faith to reach out to me. That's right. Right? right. Have just enough faith to reach out to me. You shall say into that mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Nothing, it says. We are in a time in our country history that we've seen in seen and you look back over the country's history review we've seen these times we've seen times like this before um does anybody remember in history that there was a civil war in this country mm -hmm. <laughs> um, brothers had disagreements with brothers they were on different sides you know We've seen those times in this country. And he tells us that we're going to go through all these kinds of times. We're going to go through sorrow. We're going to go through death. We're going to go through pain. Right? We're going to go through all that. But it's how we go through it is the key. How do we go through it? Are we going to go through it beaten up, downcast, right? Because that's easy to do. And our brothers and sisters don't care about us, right? Or we can go through it with our head up high, knowing that he is in control of every step. And just like what they were talking about when Jesus was walking through the sand and he thought that there was only one set of footprints and they were his, but they were actually Jesus and he was carrying them all away. Amen. He was carrying them the whole way. He thought, where did he go? Where did he go? Why did you leave me? That wasn't what it was. He was right there the whole time. Jesus is more than we give him credit for sometimes. Yes. Amen. That's right. We sell him short. Amen. He is able to fix this country with a snap of his fingers. But he has given us, us, the privilege to do it. Do you not think he can fix this country in a snap of his fingers? Absolutely he could. Right? But he has a church that was built on him. And he's giving us the right to fix this country. The church to fix the country. The country will not fix itself.
Lord, I just thank you for this day, Father. Yes. Lord, our country is a mess, Lord. Yes, Father. Lord, we need you, Father. Yes. You're the only one that can fix it, Father. Yes, Father. And Lord, we just need you to intervene, Father, in a way that is just mind-blowing to us, Father. But you said your ways are not our ways, Father. And Lord, it's a good thing because we can mess that up too. So Lord, we just ask you to touch this country, Father. Touch us as we go into this world, Father. That we may be a light, Lord. And Lord, we're going to claim, Father, you said... The veil was rent, Father. It allowed us to go into the Holy of Holies, Father. And now we're the holy ground, Father, because you dwell within us. So, Lord, we just take this holy ground, Father, and we're going to do the work that you set forth for it to do, Father. And we're just going to praise your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.